Uh, but anybody else, Stacy, that uh, maybe uh, uh, would be joining? Uh, there may be, uh, well, Grace just joined us, and there, Annette may also join us as well. She's another member of our team, and I think Daniel also teaches um, here at the college. Um, so I'm not sure um, who else will be joining. Okay, yeah, no problem. Our, our department problem. chair in biology, <laughs> I, I don't okay. know. I was oh. trying to check at the last minute. I don't know who. I don't know who um, else might be might be joining. I know there's some on the invitation, and I, I'm going to have to leave early. But anyway, I just wanted to see what it was about. Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to make sure I have everyone's uh, names down there. And oh, hi, Annette. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing really well today. Good. Uh, so while we're waiting for a couple people to trickle in, uh, why don't I go ahead, I'll share my screen and we can just wait another minute or so for anyone else to, uh, to join in. So let me do that. So uh, for those of you who aren't as familiar, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through um, a couple of apps that you guys as a school have purchased or at least your department um, and I'll show you how you can use these, how uh, your students can get involved with using these and how the two apps sort of differ and how you might wanna use them differently. Is that helpful? And by the way, just to confirm, uh, yes. Stacy, you guys will just be using uh, anatomy and physiology and human anatomy atlas, right? Correct, yes. Perfect. Um, and we can't, for those of you who joined a little later, uh, we can't see Stacy because uh, her internet isn't so great today. So sometimes, if anyone's ever having that issue over Zoom, if you turn off your camera, sometimes that helps prevent the lag and stuff like that. But everyone else seems to be on in good shape. Uh, Okay, so let's just see, and a couple more people. Hi, Katie. Hi, Andy. Thanks for joining in. Um, so for people joining in, we're going to talk through two apps that you guys are going to have access to. So the first one that I have up on my screen right now, let me hide this, is our uh, anatomy and physiology app. So, uh, and by the way, oh, okay to start. Is that okay, Stacy? And uh, like I said, I'm recording this too. Oh, absolutely. Okay, perfect. Um, great. So uh, our first app that we're going to take a look at, and this will be the next one we'll look at is uh, Human Anatomy Atlas. We'll spend more time there and you'll see why. Um, but this one here, Anatomy and Physiology, this is really great for intro level stuff, scene setting material, um, just beginner level uh, content. And not necessarily just beginner level, but it's the way that this app is set up is almost to be like a textbook. So you'll see what I mean on the left-hand side where it's literally set up like a textbook is. So we have the different chapters that walks through all the different systems of the body just like a textbook would, except it's not just still pages with still images on there. There's of course, lots and lots of really nice uh, different asset types in here. So just as an example, here's the muscular system and I'll pull this chapter up. And you can see there's a lot of different things you can do with this. So um, you can have the students review this before class, before lab, you can, so I have a lot of people that will use this during lecture as some of their lecture material too. Um, but you can see there's a nice video that goes along with the reading here. And of course there's, there's 
closed captioning there if you don't want to have the volume on. Uh, so there's not only videos and still images, but there's also these really nice interactive models too, specific to whatever chapter that you're in. Um, and as I said before, think of this app as an interactive textbook. That's the best way to put it in a nutshell. Um, so you can see, I can click on, it. obviously this is very high level, uh, just going through the different types of muscle, but you can click on all these uh, red icons on the left-hand side, and then you can dive in a little bit. So whatever you select or whatever you click, it'll highlight in blue. So there's uh, one of my heart valves. And then you can read all about whatever structure you've selected on that particular model there. And again, I'll go through this in our Atlas app after. This app is meant to be more baseline fundamentals. So there isn't as much that you can do with dissecting and hiding and fading, but there is still some. So you can come in here and you can see that you could still go in and hide or fade different structures, allowing you to get down and, and sort of dig a little bit deeper. But just really on the surface level, this is just scratching the surface and giving the students um, a nice general walkthrough. So here's, these are slides as well. So you can see these are set up almost like a, a PowerPoint in a way. And then of course, here's another interactive model. So there's all sorts of assets like that built right in there. By the way, uh, on a related note, you can see that um, on, the, on this page itself, there'll be a little icon on the right-hand side and that's just cluing you in on what type of uh, page or what type of asset you're looking at, just to give you an idea. So obviously the play button is a video, the cube is a interactive model of some sort. So you can dissect, you can rotate, you can manipulate all that fun stuff. Um, and then of course you have this one here that is just an indicator that it's just a still image, a still slide as well. So there's lots of really nice content built within here and the students can walk right through it and uh, navigate it in that way, structure by structure, or just go in on their own and uh, dive in a little bit. The one other thing I want to mention with this app here um, is these tools over on the right-hand side. So you'll notice this sort of a theme that it isn't as detailed as Atlas because it's meant to be uh, foundational. So when I click on tools, yes, I can download an image. I can take a screenshot. I can do some minor uh, drawing on here if I want to and labeling, and then I can download a custom image or I can even add notes on there too. So there is a little bit of that customization that you can do in here, uh, but I'll show you within our uh, Human Anatomy Atlas app, that's where the real customization comes in. And we can, um, I'll show you guys that in just a minute. Um, now, just back to the main menu here, and I'll pause in a second for any questions that have come up. Uh, just a couple other little things here. These checklists are also really helpful. So for whatever uh, chapter you're working on, whether it's blood or whether it's something in the lymphatic system, it'll just give you a nice checklist uh, to work through on your own, just to make sure and check off things that you should know going into lab or going into lecture, or whatever it is. So a lot of people like using these checklists just as a nice barometer. And then the last thing are uh, the practice quizzes. So um, there's some really awesome practice quizzes built right here, right into the app itself. And whether that be uh, multiple choice or um, you can see here that cube again indicates an interactive model. So 
you can see there's some really nice practice quizzes built right in here. And the, the good part about these is they're meant to be for learning. So the, the grades aren't going anywhere and it's t it can tell the students where the correct answer is. So obviously that valve is not the left atrium. I wanna get this wrong to show you what I mean. Students like to use this as a learning tool because you can see incorrect, but then it'll highlight the correct answer for you. So that's why this is a really nice um, way to emphasize what things I still need to learn is you can highlight what the incorrect answer is. So those quizzes are great, whether it's that dissection style or if it's multiple choice. Um, and honestly, for, for anatomy and physiology, that's really it. That's sort of the overview of that app. Uh, it's very streamlined and it's meant to be a nice uh, foundational tool uh, for students to use. Are there any questions about that that have come up? And since it's a relatively small group, uh, you can just uh, unmute yourself and ask, or if you feel more comfortable putting it in the chat, either way. I have a question, Matt. Sure. Uh, so the checklists are, is that, is that, um, are those assessments recorded or is there any indication that the student completed the checklist? Good question. As to the quizzes? So not within the apps themselves. So just to give you an idea, um, as you might know, or at least maybe Stacy might know, um, we have another, uh, how could I put it, a larger platform that some schools elect to use that's almost like a mini learning management system in and of itself uh, called Visible Body Courseware. Uh, and a lot of schools like yourselves just go with the apps themselves. So within courseware, there's ways to uh, okay. track grades and quizzes and stuff, but within the apps themselves, there, there isn't a way to go in and say, oh, okay, he did this or she did that. Does that make sense, Stacy? Correct, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, especially within this app, I can show you in Atlas um, how you could basically assign students to uh, make a custom view of a model and send it to you almost as a way of saying, hey, I studied this, I went through what I needed to do, I'm proving it, here's the view that I've made. Any other questions about uh, anatomy and physiology as a whole? Pretty standard, uh, nice and easy there. Not too much to it. I guess okay. my question for Andy or and Daniel would 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 you like to see anything under the cell and tissues, anything related to biology in this app? No, I'm good. On? Yeah, go ahead, Andy. I, I'll I'll let Andy answer. He'd be more familiar with what he might want to see. Um, I'm I'm good actually. Yeah, there's lots okay, of stuff thanks. in here and you'll notice that uh, it'll give you a good baseline for, for each of the body systems. Um, and it'll walk you through everything you need to know. And then once you get into uh, Human Anatomy Atlas, it allows you to dive a little deeper and see things like pathologies that might occur in a certain bone or muscle. Um, but yeah, this has a nice, uh, that first level there, cells and tissues, walks through the cells and gives you just a good idea through videos, through interactive models, um, how everything works. Well, all set guys to move on to the other app, uh, Human Anatomy Atlas? Yes, I'm good. Great.
And by the way, Andy, I like your uh, your background image on your Zoom. It's creative. <laughs> you also found it humorous. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so here we are. Here's Human Anatomy Atlas. This is, um, I think, the best way to to think about this app here, rather than being an interactive textbook like the A and P app. Think of this like a giant, robust reference app of all sorts of interactive models. Um, so you can see on the main menu here that we have a ton of regional views, a ton of pre-made system views, so models based on each of the systems. And I'll pull one up and show you uh, some of the navigation tips. But there's also gross anatomy views. So these are really nice for if you're filling in and, and trying to replicate a cadaver style lab, this is the sort of thing that a lot of people use. So these ones are great. And you can do full uh, dissections, whether that be in, in supine or prone. And I'll show you uh, in a minute, we'll sort of dive into this menu just to give you an idea of all the different options that you actually have from bulk dissection, or just dissecting one small structure at a time. Um, so there's lots and lots that you can do. We won't dive into these in detail today just for the sake of time, but just, just know that there's also some really nice cross sections in here as well, if that is the type of work that you're doing where maybe you incorporate uh, CT scans or, or that sort of thing within your course. Just to give you a quick example, here's a nice uh, cross section. And you can see we incorporate MRI scans and cadaver scans as well. So it's just a nice uh, unique way of viewing it. And anything you click over here, obviously will be highlighted in blue over here. So those cross sections are kind of fun in and of themselves um, to explore. Uh, now, we also have a, a selection of microanatomy, too, things like the inner ear and uh, the eye and the tongue um, and even the teeth. We had someone at a school specifically using this for a dental anatomy uh, course as well. So lots of interactive items. Uh, and then the last thing on this views menu, uh, muscle actions. I just wanted you guys to know that these are available as well. So we have a whole bank of, I'd, I think it's 60 plus uh, muscle actions. Let me just click on one right here, shoulder abduction. And these are really helpful. So they're, they're still fully interactive. And we just made an update so that when this muscle is not actually contracting, it's not actually doing or actioning shoulder oops, adduction, it'll be grayed out. So you can see there, it's just a nice way to narrow it down for the student, where if this muscle is not in action, it'll be grayed out. So there's a whole bank of these built right in there that you can utilize and show. And I'll show you if we have time, you could even utilize these within um, our augmented reality feature. And just to get a gauge, has anyone ever heard of that before? That word, augmented reality? Grace mm. says yes. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Oh, cool. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to show you that before we break up at, um, at two, or I guess that'd be noon, your time. Uh, so, just to give you an idea of what that means, augmented reality is where you can take any of the models in this app here, not within the a &P app, but this one, any model within our Atlas app. And what you can do is you can basically, using your the mobile version of this app, using the camera on your iPad or iPhone or Android, you can basically take this model and bring it into the room in real time. 
um, and walk around it. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean, because it sounds kind of crazy <laughs> without actually ex showing you it. So I'll show you guys that in a couple of minutes. Um, that's a really nice added bonus of downloading the mobile versions of these apps, which you guys will have access to um, as well without, a, without an additional cost. Cool. So um, that's sort of the, the, the basis of this. And by the way, same thing with the quizzes where um, very similar to AMP, where there's some really nice uh, pre-made practice quizzes that are right in here. And same thing, they include these interactive models and it'll tell you if you get something wrong so that you can learn from uh, your mistakes. Now, one other uh, new feature. So if anyone used this prior at a different school or anything, uh, this new media tab is new as of about a month or two ago, I think. So what we did was we, we now have a bunch of nice, short, succinct, but also detailed videos that go through uh, physiological processes and then also through pathologies too. So you can see there's some advanced animations and that's where you'll have a nice walkthrough of something like osteoporosis. And I'll, I'll mute that. So you can see like this one, it's only 30 seconds long or 25 seconds long. It's just a nice quick snippet that you can give to your students or even pull up right there in lecture uh, and walk them through whether it's a specific pathology like COPD or asthma or whatever it is. Or if you're just showing them a quick run through of what breathing looks like or sneezing, something as simple as sneezing. And you can see it's broken down uh, by all the different body systems there. So there's all sorts of really awesome content um, just in the form of videos too. So Matt, I have a question and um, Stacy probably already knows this, but um... So are these like objects you can bring into the learning management system? Like, oh, I want the kidney stone one in this in this lesson, and I'm just going to bring that in as an object, or is this a lesson that that you link to from the LMS? Usually, you'd probably link to it from the LMS. Um, although uh, there is a little bit of a workaround that actually instructors told us they were doing, and we're totally fine with it because you're paying for the product. So just a, I guess a word of advice, if you wanted to, for example, embed this directly into a PowerPoint or, or something, you could use, uh, we had someone say this the other day, there's a tool within PowerPoint and I'm sure similar uh, platforms where you can, uh, basically record your screen and then basically, in other words, take this outside of this app itself and it's still good quality video. It's, it still looks the same, but you have it embedded right there in your PowerPoint. Does that make sense, Grace? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I was yeah. just kind of wondering how, how this interacts with the, the learning management system. So that- yeah. So I thought that was kind of a fun little workaround. Yeah, um, yeah the way that it's, uh, like I was saying earlier, we do have that separate, uh, what we call visible body courseware. And there it allows you to sort of more or less make assignments out of one of these. Since you guys just have the apps themselves, you certainly could um, just direct them to one of these. But that idea, if you want to do embed it, right into a PowerPoint. You could use that uh, PowerPoint tool. I actually don't have PowerPoint, but I've, so I don't know what it looks like in there, um, but I guess you can easily record your screen as you're uh, playing one of these if you wanted, if you didn't necessarily want to jump in here to play this kidney stone interaction, this animation. 
Good question though there. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, so whoops, let me uh, jump back to the main views here. What I wanted to show you was, uh, let me just give you a nice uh, general overview of, I think maybe I could use just a full body muscular system view. So you can see all these awesome pre-made uh, views here. I happen to select just a full body muscular system view. We've, we've pre-dissected a bunch of different uh, body systems out of there. And we're, we're just focused on the, the muscular system right now. Um, so what you could do with this is well, a lot, um, but just to first off, give you an idea of how to navigate these. The good news is you can use your mouse, you can use your trackpad, you can use just your keyboard if you want to, um, to navigate this. Or you can see over in the corner too, and you can move this around, that we also have that joystick. So if your mouse is super sensitive, uh, for example, right now I'm using the scroller, just the, the, the scroller wheel on my mouse. Depending on your mouse, some have uh, factory settings that it, you might feel like you're scrolling forever. So maybe you wanna use the plus and minus signs on your keyboard, or maybe you want to just use this joystick as a quick and easy way to, to zoom in and out. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, and you can see the best way to, to rotate is obviously just click and drag, whether that's on your uh, mouse or whether that's on your trackpad. If you right click, or excuse me, left click or regular click and drag, that allows you to, to rotate that model. Now, one important thing that a lot of people students, I should say, forget about is, uh, here's an example. If I wanted to focus in on the muscles near the foot or in the foot, how could I do that without just rotating? And obviously I can't really see that right here. So in other words, the question is, how do I reposition this model without rotating? it? And that what you do there is you can right click and drag it around the screen or you can hold your space bar and drag it around the screen. Or again, same thing. You could even just use this joystick too. So we try to give you lots of different ways to, uh, to navigate these things. And not only that, but we also have, and I'll, let me make a note. We have a nice help center article that sort of lays out all these different ways to navigate the models, just depending on how you personally, uh, what you personally prefer. Would that be helpful to send along after our meeting? Yeah, I think so. Sure. Cool. Let me make a note. Um, so uh, some of the tools in here that I think you might find helpful um, are uh, being able to dissect things. So there's a few ways to do that. So if, if you were just looking to get rid of one thing, just one item, one structure, I just wanna take that pectoralis major and hide that, dissect just one thing. You could click on it, it'll highlight that structure. And then over in that menu, you can either click hide or fade if you just wanted to, um, to be see-through. That's more or less used if you just want to hide one thing. But notice that if you could also use this dissect tool. So think of that more like if you're going to go in there and you're going to dissect a bunch of things one by one in a more realistic way, think of that dissect tool more like an on off switch. So you can see I clicked it, it's blue, it's turned on. Anything I click now, is going to be dissected away. So now I can really focus in on the pectoralis minor. So that allows you to dissect um, things back to back to back. You could also do multi-select 
same sort of idea where you could select a bunch of structures and then quickly just hide all of those. So lots of different ways you can um, add and subtract different structures in there. So this brings up another good point, by the way. Um, you can see in this example, maybe I, uh, it's all, it's fine that this nerve is here, but maybe it's a little distracting. I wanted to look at these muscles down here and these nerves are in my way. Uh, a great way to dissect an entire body system without having to click on each of these nerves and remove each of them is this uh, systems tray over here on the left. So just think of that, it's a pop-out menu. Just think of that as like a bulk addition or subtraction uh, tool. So you can see, I just removed the entire muscular system. I just added the entire muscular system. And you can see here, if I wanted to just completely get rid of the nervous system, I just have to click it once. And now I can focus in on those particular uh, muscles that I wanted to. So this just allows you to add, uh, say, here's the lymphatic system. Now it just allows me to see just one thing at a time and I can stack them, um, whether that be regionally or for the whole body. Does that make sense, guys? Is that helpful to see how you can uh, use it as almost like a bulk tool? Yes. Great. Um, awesome. So you know what I'll do? Let me go. Oh, and this actually brings up a good point. Um, these views here, this just allows you to jump back to the first thing I had pulled up was that uh, view of the brain, the first model. So you can just easily jump between models that you've been working on just as a nice seamless way rather than or an alternative to going back to the main menu. Just makes for a nice easy flow. Um, if you're working within the uh, muscular system and you're going from view to view, you can easily use those back and forward arrows just to go quickly from one to another. Uh, now, the last thing I wanted to show you before I show you our fancy new sharing features is um, this menu on the right, just to give you an idea. Um, some of it's self-explanatory, such as the fading and the hiding, like we talked about. Um, that related content is really nice because it'll pre-populate um, any related content that we think might be helpful. So in this case, it's, it's highlighting some uh, muscle actions that include the pectoralis major. And then a couple of different models. So there's a, a related model that we thought maybe that might be helpful. And you can jump right into that. Similar to A and P that you can read about whatever structure you've selected, read about origin, insertion, all that fun stuff. You can also read about the different pathologies for uh, a particular muscle or hear the pronunciation. Um, or this here will allow you to just isolate just that one structure. Um, the one thing I wanna highlight is uh, this here, this red pin or the details tab, which will look slightly different if you have a bone. So you can see, here's my sternum, same thing. It's still a details tab, but just remember that's a super important button because that's the one that allows you to dive in to, and take it to that next level. So for a muscle, if I click on the details tab, it just allows me to go in and see those origin and insertion points and see the blood supply. So there's my blood supply and see the innervation and then same thing, related content. So whether it's that, or if I clicked on a bone, there's my uh, sternum. 
and I clicked on my details, that's going to allow me to dive into something like bony landmark or, or yeah, bony landmarks. So those are all selectable and you can read about every bony landmark on, on all the bones. Some people like this other tool over here too, just one last item because it allows you to add the muscles directly onto that bone. So just a fun, different visual way to show students how you can actually, or where exactly those muscles are attaching. That in particular, students really seem to like. Um, and then I guess the last thing, uh, and then I'll pause for any questions, is um, adding a tag. You probably saw that in there. Self-explanatory, but I wanted to point out one thing about it. Um, if you add a tag in there, there's my little tag, you can decide uh, if you want to make that blank or not. So you could sort of make it into a quiz style activity by going into your settings and making those, uh, here it is, uh, making those tanks, those tags blank. So those can be uh, fiddled around with as well. Any questions guys uh, thus far? Just about the different uh, features in here. All good? Um, it's good. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, people love this app in particular. Um, and especially the, the last two things I want to show you are uh, this, the My Library style content, and then that AR mode, which I'll show you as well. Um, so My Library is where you can uh, and you can see I just have a bunch of silly ones in here too. Um, you can take any of those models that I showed you in that whole list and you can add labels, you can pre-dissect them to exactly how you want them to show up. You can uh, add interactive arrows, you can add notepads, all that sort of stuff. And so that's what a favorite is, of course. What a tour is, is if you take at least three of your favorites, so custom uh, favorites that you've saved, you can basically make it into a little slideshow for yourself or into it and to give to the students. So here's a, just a little example of one. So I took a few, well, actually I didn't make this. We took a few pre-made, uh, views just like you can find in the atlas app and we put them together we strung them together to make them into a nice uh and these are blank just because i added that in there so pre-dissected this heart and added these particular structures highlighted the valves the conduction system and then you can see there We've also even added some blood flow arrows too, interactive arrows that'll move along with the rotation. So all that stuff can be added in there. Um, and I'll show you a quick example of how to make just a, a silly one, just so you know where those buttons are. I have um, a quick question. Sure. Um, as you're going through the, the five tour slides here, uh, there was a transition where the, it would rotate and kind of zoom in or zoom out. Is that automatic? So you mean when it zoomed in like that? Like you, and when you go from one view to like right there, it yeah. rotated and you zoomed in. So, That's exactly right. So yeah, you can save it exactly how you want it to show up in the next one. Yes, so where you've got the two slides the transition between the two is automatic? Yes, so like this, when it, it backs up and moves on to the fourth one. 
Okay. So is the question, um, so for example, let me jump back here uh, to the second one. So we're zoomed out, you can see the whole heart here. In the next page, the next slide, I should say, it's zoomed way in because it's focused on the valves. Is the question, is that zooming being done automatically? Is that what you mean? So, so I realized that you've, you've saved two different uh, views, the previous view and this view, but the transition between the two, as you click the, the right arrow, yep. the heart rotated and then you zoomed in. And that transition between the two, is that automatic? Yeah, the transition is because I've set this one here to be this far out. So I could set this to be like this, which wouldn't be as helpful, and save it like that. So I know, okay, when it gets to this page, I want it to be this far out. And when it gets to this page, I'd like it to be just like this, this zoomed in, just focusing on the valves. So when you're saving the view, when you're in there and you're, uh, you pull up uh, whatever structure it is, there's the back muscles. I want it to be saved just like this. When you hit save, it'll know, okay, that's how it's gonna pull up that view right when I click next. Does that make sense, Andy? Yeah, it does. I just, I instead of a, a series of still shots, it rotates and zooms and pans and things, which is really nice. Yeah. Uh, often students will get lost when moving from uh, one picture to the next because they are not sure how you got there. Yeah. And that's the thing, especially when it's um, like that heart one that I was showing you, it's even better there because if you're focusing in on the same structure, it's even better because that transition is even more seamless. But you you could have uh, a tour, and I could see if I have one in here. Oops, that's not necessarily uh, the same structure. So let me see. So you see what I mean? You could. It's a little less smooth because it's a totally different structure with totally different. Um, structures on there. See what I mean? Where it's jumping from the yeah. skull and the brain to the female reproductive system. But yes, it's, it's still uh, nice. I like it. Yeah, it's still transitioning in a relatively smooth way. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the way that you could do those, that was a good question. Uh, the way that you could do those, just to give you an idea, is uh, when you pull up any model, um, I showed you how you can add a tag. Um, you've seen how uh, you can add a notepad in there as well, almost just for, for taking notes and things. Um, and you can also add the drawings too. So you can uh, add arrows on here. And by the way, this freaks a lot of people out, but don't let it. Uh, the, the, what this is for, what this grid is for, is so that after you draw your arrows and you rotate the model, that arrow is still going to be pointing where you want it to point. So think of this as you're deciding what plane to draw this, your arrows on, or circles, or whatever it is. Does that make sense, guys? The way that one of my colleagues explains it is, Think of a, she said, think of a dead body in water and cover up that dead body <laughs> up until the point, just the point that you want uh, showing or just the point that you want to point an arrow at. So in this case, I just want to point at the sternum. So I'll basically cover this all up, up until the sternum. And now there's all sorts of different drawing features, whether it's a custom drawing or just a, a um, arrow like that, or I can draw uh, a little oval there. So I can, you can mess around and um, utilize this in a bunch of different ways. But now you can see after the fact, now that I rotate it, it's still gonna be pointing to the right spot. 
Um, so just to finish off what all this is leading up to is um, our newest feature. You can now share these. So any of these custom views, so you can dissect something down, add these arrows, add a notepad in here, all that sort of stuff. You could then go ahead and save this uh, as a favorite and, and add it to one of those tours or slideshows. Um, and then you could also uh, share this with your students. So almost as a, uh, a lesson in a way uh, and vice versa. They, the students have access to these tools in Atlas too. So you could say, hey, here's a list of 10 bones you have to pick five and make a little tour out of them and talk about the bony landmarks, something like that. So basically all you have to do is uh, click that share link, copy that link, send it off to the students or vice versa. And uh, the recipient of that link will be able to pull up this exact model pre-dissected with the arrows, with the notes, all that sort of stuff. So that's a really nice new feature because before uh, there was some minor sharing you could do, but you couldn't share anything with these arrows on there or anything like that. Um, and the, the other good news here on top of that is you can share this across devices now too. So what I mean by that is, uh, you'll have one centralized account. So if you make this custom drawing or a custom tour in your web app, like I, I'm just on the, my desktop now, you can pull it up on your mobile app and it'll be in there because anything in my library will be there across your devices. So before the mobile apps were sort of off by themselves, it was just an additional uh, way to view things, but now you can share that information across your account. Um, so that's the beauty of it is, is you and the students, you can pull these views up on your mobile device or on the desktop uh, if you want to. Is there a way to easily share um, library views in bulk? Ooh, good question. Uh, not yet. That's actually something that came up in a meeting the other day. I think it was, or the other day, or maybe last week. Um, it was. It's something that was is on the list. It was originally part of the original uh, unveiling of my library, um, but they didn't have time to squeeze it in there. But it is something that we want to do. So, in other words, being able to share eight different tours, right? Uh, and was that Andy? Yes. Yeah, that's good feedback. Um, yeah, it's definitely on there. That's something we wanna be able to do so that you can share a, a handful of things uh, at once. Um, you know, one, one last thing to wrap that sharing portion up, I, which I didn't show you is um, just make sure that uh, if somebody sends you a, a view or you send the student a view, if you are pulling up that view uh, or that custom URL that you sent that I showed you, make sure that you don't just plop it here into the, the URL. Um, make sure that you first plug it in here. Um, something to do with the software. If you were to take that share link I sent and just plug it in here, you would just get a blank screen. So there's just that one little step. Make sure if somebody's sending you a share link, just, just click on this link here, plug it in here, and then you can pull it up. Um, the good news, if you're pulling it up on your mobile app, the good news is there, you don't have to use that. You just click the link that they sent you, up it goes. So the mobile app is uh, easier in, in that particular way. Um, that's just a funky little uh, engineering thing, I think, the difference between the mobile and the, the web app. Does that make sense, guys? Um, great. So 
if there's no, I'm just leaning down to get my iPad. If there's no other questions, would you guys like to just quickly see what the heck I mean by augmented reality? Yes, that sounds very yes. cool. Cool, yeah. So let me do that. Um, but generally speaking, that's sort of our uh, crash course on Atlas. So there's lots of stuff in there. The best thing to do is just go in, even if you have like, you know, a, a spare half hour and just poke around and see what's in there. There's lots of great stuff. So give me one second and I will, I just uh, updated my iPad. So I want, I, I hope there weren't any crazy software tweaks. Did somebody so I had have a, a question? No, I had a, a little comment. Um, oh, sure. I, I've been using uh, your app along with the augmented reality stuff. Oh, nice. And uh, I had a, a student who had been using it. And uh, if you remove areas of the, the body and the augmented reality, it still shows kind of a, a ghostly outline of a person. Yeah. So she, oh, she used her iPad to take like a screenshot of the augmented reality uh, image of like a completely ghostly body and her son with the ghost <laughs> standing behind him and then she told him that he was being haunted. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Um, that's kind of funny. So let me, uh, and by the way, oh, I haven't clicked it yet. Can you guys see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Great. So uh, the yes. most the mobile app works very similar to uh, the web app. It all looks the same. There's just that one extra feature where if I open up any old model here, you can see in the bottom left, there's that AR button. So I'm going to just turn my body so I can point it at something. Oops, I hit the share button by accident. Uh, there's that AR button. So that allows you to take that model. There we go. And see those dots there? What that's doing is it's gauging how far away the floor is so that I can take that model, I can zoom in, make it bigger, smaller, I can reposition it in the room, and I can, now I have this crazy full body uh, circulatory system right here in the room. So I can stand up, I can walk around this, I can, uh, zoom in, I can walk right up to it. And this is sort of what uh, Andy was saying was, um, and let me give you an even better idea. I could uh, remove some of the body systems using that systems tray, just like I did on the web app, but it sort of allows you to uh, have a little more fun with it and make it a, a real experience with uh, dissecting and, and that sort of stuff. Is that helpful or cool to see? That's very cool. Is it like a projected yes. holograph? Is that what it is? So it, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, you can only see it right from the screen itself. So okay. what it's doing is it's using your camera to basically project it into the room. And then you use your screen on your device to, uh, to sort of dive in. Look around. Huh. Oh, that's bloody awesome. You have to be looking at your phone screen or at the iPad screen <laughs> to see the object. You can't, it's not just standing there. Okay. Huh. Yes, wow. it's, it's very cool. Um, and on top of that, we have, uh, let me see if it's uh, here in the mobile uh, version. Um, I didn't, I could touch on it just quickly because we just have a couple minutes, but included in your access is when I clicked on quizzing and then I clicked on lab activities, there's all these nice PDFs um, or essentially worksheets that we've put together that go right along with particular models um, that you can give your students. So they're really cool. Um, and they just give you a nice place to start. Um, 
couple worksheets to give the students that sort of utilize, say, the pulmonary circulation view. Um, so those are great. Those are really helpful. I'll go back there. Matt, and will say, this work with 3D goggles? Uh, actually, it, it won't. Um, so that's the interesting part is, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain it that, uh, how do I put it? I think the way that someone put it before was augmented reality is what we have. So augmented reality is you're bringing uh, another world into your world and virtual reality is sort of the opposite. And I think that's where you use the goggles where it's the opposite and that you're going into that other world. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was wondering if there some kind of complete a version. There this is, is really cool. Yeah, there is a version, some sort of a version of that that we use with high schools sometimes called, um, oh geez, and, and I don't, usually i don't even i've never seen it but i think it's called i can find it on our website i'm blanking right now but it is a little bit closer to that type of version where you put on a headset if i could comment really quick andrew we actually uh tried out a virtual reality version um uh, not of this particular program but of another company's uh, system yeah we had it set up over at uh, the Canyon County Center. The problem with the virtual reality is that it takes uh, kind of a dedicated computer with uh, a somewhat beefy graphics card. And so the, the cost is uh, a, quite a lot more. And oh, yeah, the yeah. issue was that only one student could use it at a time. And furthermore, uh, a lot of people tend to have nausea issues with virtual reality. Huh. Whereas uh, with the augmented reality, it works on Android phones and iPhones, which pretty much everybody has. And uh, you don't get the same nauseous feeling because there's enough uh, extraneous clues for the vestibular system to uh, your, 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 your brain's balance system to not get uh, confused. Yeah. I've done the virtual reality uh one of the video games before and it is a wild experience um it's it is something that you get dizzy and have to get used to this like you said andy is um well first off more widely available like you said you don't have to have like a, a fancy system it it works with i think pretty much everything from like iphone 5 and up for example so it's not like you have to have the newest, greatest phone or anything. Um, so that's the beauty of AR is it allows you to, uh, most people have uh, iPhones and Androids and it works with uh, most of those. It's pretty fantastic actually. Yeah. And a lot. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll send you guys, and I know we're sort of past time here but um were there any uh any last minute questions you guys wanted to go through or was this just a helpful uh overview of everything that we offer i wouldn't mind seeing the search feature can you do save searches and stuff or is it just in your uh your library so say that again the search feature like, like uh, just the search feature if you want to look up something fast is there somewhere you can type it in or oh absolutely like you know what i don't think i uh my apologies. I don't think I showed that. Let me. There we go. Yeah. So within Atlas, um, yes, you can quickly search for one individual structure in the app itself. But then you could also say within a particular model, there's also this here. See this anatomy search feature? Oh, cool. Yeah. So you could sort of do it in both ways where you could search for something more general back on the home screen. Or here you could say, uh, I just want to search for the humorous or something. And it'll take you right to it. Nice. So, yeah. And if, by the way, if it's not on there, so if I'm searching for 
whoops, the deltoid muscle, obviously that's not on there right now because the muscular system is not. See how it's a different option? It'll say yeah. add. So you can add one individual item on there too if you didn't want to just add the full system. Well, thank you very much. That's cool. Yeah, good point. I, I just, I think I might've just skipped over that by accident. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, you could definitely search for, just do a quick search for little structures, big structures, body systems, um, everything you need. Nice. Yeah. Uh, any other last minute questions, guys? I see you're recording this. Uh, is there some way we can access that recording to share with others? Absolutely. I will, uh, I'll send this over. And you know what I wanna do is let me make sure. Because sometimes when you save a recording, it for some reason doesn't keep everyone's name in there. Um, so what I'll do in worst case, I'll make sure that Stacy gets it um, mm -hmm. and I'll include. Sure. Say that again. Yes. And yes, if you could send that to me, um, I will send that up out to everybody. That's perfect. Um, yeah. So either way works. Okay, I think I got everyone, but I just wanna, cause a couple people had to pop out anyway. Um, but yeah, we'll get you that. Um, we'll make sure that you guys have the recording and uh, I'll send over just a couple other helpful uh, help center articles and things like that. Super, thanks. All right, thank you. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Thank you right, so guys. much. Thanks. Yeah, all right. it was fun to meet with you all. and. Uh, just let me know if anybody ever, once you dive in and if you get confused or anything, uh, just let us know if there's any questions, if you want to hop on another call, whatever, whatever you guys need. Cool. Great. Thank you, we Matt. appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank Have you. a good rest of the day. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You too.